Cat, it's Maximus here, this time with a, not really a review, this is actually a butchery of this Logitech Prodigy G213 computer keyboard. It is an RGB keyboard. I did, a get, did get it for Christmas, and I actually kind of like the mouse that it came with, the G203, but uh, this keyboard, I like slim and more compact keyboards, this thing is just huge, and I said I really appreciate it, but I'm probably going to, uh, if I use it, I'm going to need to butcher it, because there's just way too much space. And so that's what this video is about. Let's go ahead and unplug it and start to get this thing apart. We can see two screws here, but I'm sure there's more holding that together. Probably under some of these pads. I don't see any other of these feet. This keyboard uh, can be found for about 40 bucks on Amazon. And I guess that's kind of cheap. RGB keyboards, there's just a mountain of those things. A huge variety of them. And it really seems like uh, the Logitechs aren't quite as competitive as... Uh, you know, you would hope they would be. There may be a screw under there, too. Let's go and get this stuff peeled off. And indeed, there are a ton of screws. So we'll see if I can't, if it's kind of like integrated. Many keyboards, uh, at least a few that I've taken apart, this front panel is kind of what holds it all together. So we'll see if that's the case here. Uh, some of them you can actually remove the shell and just have the keys like on the circuit board. So that's what I'm hoping for here. Let's get those screws out of here. And here we are. I don't know if I point out, but there are screws under all the stick-on pads, but they all peel off pretty good and can be reattached maybe if you spilled something. Uh, what I thought was funny is they advertise this as being spill-resistant, but it has absolutely no drains whatsoever. So we've got those out, but it still appears to have some type of little plastic clips along the edge. Try to get those loose here. And here we have it. I've snapped all those. There's a whole bunch of little plastic clips that still hold it together. And unfortunately, all the keys, this is one big overmolded piece. We can see that the top part of the keyboard is actually both the same for the short version and the long version. They just screw this extra panel on. But on the lower portion, they actually take advantage of that space and put a circuit board down here. This is all one big sheet. So it kind of looks like, unfortunately, not a ton that can be done at least as far as having the keyboard perhaps sit by itself without uh, the massive amount of bezel. The plastic on this is uh, ABS. We can see that right here. So it's pretty weak, not very good. I guess the best thing that you could really do is maybe peel this up since this membrane is just basically providing the, the, the spring for the switches. And then these little pads are what it's actually pressing on and that giving you the key activation. So I suppose you could just write on this plastic pad and then you could actually have a super thin touch keyboard with a, uh, the circuit boards hanging off. It wouldn't last very long, but at least there's a little tear down inside this. I'm actually going to pull all these parts out, so let me do it. But let me plug it in real fast just to see the coloring. Here we can see that it's actually quite a bit brighter without uh, the keys and that keyboard really sucked. It actually has a pretty bright setup. And of course, this strip down the bottom is actually what's providing the RGB that just has one, two, three, four, five zones, and you can, they're pretty clear, clearly visible here. Well, we have this taken apart. The bottom tray is even worse than the ABS. That is hips, and that's a pretty rare piece of uh, plastic. You know what that stands for is high-impact polystyrene. This is styrofoam, basically, just not foam, but definitely pretty weak plastic. It's actually even worse than ABS as far as strength goes. It's great for styrofoam. Uh, polystyrene actually has quite a few other applications which are just fantastic. Uh, solid plastic housings is not one of them. And uh, yes, inside that keyboard, all the parts and all the little things that are in it, this stuff right here is all that's actually needed to operate the keyboard. Uh, the membrane, this pushes up the keys. That's all this is, is just a silicone membrane. This is the plastic card. Uh, which transfers the light in the five different zones for the RGB. And oddly enough, they had a metal shield, but the metal shield wasn't under any of the circuit boards. This was just screwed to the bottom of the keyboard. Um, it, this doesn't really add any rigidity. I really believe it was nothing more than to add just a little bit of weight. Uh, this thing probably is 20% plus of the weight of that keyboard, just to make it feel a little bit more solid. And I think that's pretty cheesy. Uh, just to add a little bit of weight, shouldn't have, should have saved the money and charged people a little bit less because it's a pretty cheaply built keyboard. And here we are again. Let me turn off the light just so it's a little bit easier, but we can see the 
RGB LEDs. I don't want to short too much out here, but there they all are. They actually have apparently two RGB SMC LEDs. These are actually surface mount, but they point 90 degrees, so they're pointing forward even though they're on the surface, and two per zone. And this just gives you an idea of exactly how big the keyboard would need to be. Uh, we can, you know, do our caps lock there. We can do our, which one of these is num? There's our num lock. Here's our caps lock. So to give you an idea, this is really how thin a keyboard could be made. It could be made super duper thin, even RGB and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of annoys me when the manufacturers are doing this. They give you these huge platforms and and there's just absolutely no reason for it whatsoever. So anyway, that was the teardown of this keyboard. There actually was, when it comes to YouTube, there is a lot more reviews, generally speaking, of computer-related hardware than obviously tools like I do because it's a computer item. It's a YouTube is an internet website. There's a lot of reviews of this keyboard. I think I even saw one that had huge amount, you know, 700,000 reviews or views, and the review was great. Um, it's just that this is a cheesy keyboard, and I wish more people would kind of go inside these type of things to show what you're really buying. And really, you know, this is not a good switching system here. These little membranes are just, you know, they wear out if you get it. And it says that it's resistant to liquid. I don't see how, because liquid, all these holes, liquid's going to get in between. How this works is three sheets. We have our printed wires on one side, printed wires on the other side. And then we have this middle sheet, which has a bunch of... If we can just see there, you can see it has all these cutouts, and so that's providing essentially the separation so these just don't always touching. But it's a terrible design. As soon as you get liquids on it, those liquids will get guaranteed will be in between these layers and get built up on these little pads, and then your keyboard won't work anymore. And it's really surprising that they would advertise being uh, liquid resistant, especially uh, when it uses this type of system and doesn't have any drains. Anyway, I won't be using this as an actual keyboard. I think what I'll be doing is actually just pulling out the actual keyboard itself. And I'm not going to be needing the little LEDs for uh, the caps lock. But since I've got it into this position, let's see if I can't just have the circuit board and have this as... Um, Wow, oh, I see. They must have intentionally done that. I was just noticing some of these LEDs were not soldered on particularly straight, but they may be intentionally angling those uh, for the reflection pattern. But I think I may use this as, indeed, an RGB driver. And I'm pretty sure the Logitech software would still work in this situation, even though it doesn't have any keys attached to it. It's kind of neat that I'm going to be able to use it like this. I guess the one last thing to really mention is, and I think it is cool, is the fact that these RGB LEDs are so tiny. That's one of the things that the future has brought is, I mean, here's my, in come on, there's my index finger. I mean, that LED, that's a red, green, blue LED, and the thing is tiny. I mean, it's the size of a piece of a grain of rice or extremely tiny grain of rice and still it's super bright in three different colors. Anyway... I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.